Welcome to our next tutorial of Mesh to Surface for SOLIDWORKS. In this tutorial, we'll go through the details how we can use a freeform surfacing in SOLIDWORKS and we will learn how to convert this complex freeform shape from scan mesh, which I will hide now, into a fully compatible SOLIDWORKS surface that can be used for manufacturing by, for example, thickening this object and uh, use it in the further process. Before we begin, I will just close this document and we'll start with a new empty part. I will make sure I go to the Mesh to Surface tab. As you can see, most of the tools are disabled, but only Freeform is available. The reason for this is that you can use freeform modeling even without a reference mesh. And this is how we will start. I will just um, put my orientation in the standard view. As you see, it's in the front view. And I enter the freeform control panel. Now you can see there are a lot of tools here and we will go step by step through all of them. I would like to say that maybe some of you are already familiar with what it's called uh, sub-D modeling and probably you will find a lot of similarities here but also we have a lot of features and tools that are unique for our solution. So let's try and explore our tools. The first panel is about the manipulation and logically we have something which is called select and manipulate. What it currently does, you can just uh, create a rectangle on the screen, but nothing more. In order to start, we have to start creating our faces. If you select the Add Face button, we enter in this mode, which is uh, allows the user to create only one single four-sided patch. What does it mean? That by default it's uh, selected to four-sided Face, and I can just click on the screen and I can just pick four points. As you can see, Mesh to Surface created our first part. It's just arbitrary in space, it has um, four corners, but what we else we can do is actually add a rectangular face. When you have a rectangular face, you can just click on one position and then you can click somewhere else. So as you can see, we have now two patches. Nothing else happens and it automatically goes back to the manipulation mode that will allow us to play with this object on the screen. Unlike the other software, we only provide these tools to add a face. We don't provide uh, adding a box or cylinder because we don't need it because our focus is for reverse engineering on the scan meshes. So let's explore more what we can do. Here, again, as I said, I can just drag and create a rectangle on the screen. What happens is that the software selects all the points that are within our rectangle and they are highlighted in yellow. If you want to unselect, you just click somewhere in an empty space. The first optional list is uh, what is called what is actually will be selected on the screen. When you start working uh, in a more advanced mode, you will realize that sometimes you need to play only with the points or only with the edges or only with the faces. By default, the standard selection is set to point and edges. What it means that you cannot select any face, but you can just move and highlight an edge. And if you want to select it, you just click on this edge. It becomes yellow. You can also select a, a point or you can use the rectangular selection. Now, if I want to add more to my selection, I can just hold the control key and it will add the existing selection. If I want to unselect something and leave the remaining, I will just hold the shift key and paint with the rectangular selection over this area that I don't need to be selected. So as you know how to select now um, elements on the screen, let's try to do something more to make it more dynamic. I mean, just to move this in space and change the shape. 
I will just highlight my first point and hold my left mouse button and just move it on the screen. As you can see, it freely moves on the screen. I can do the same for my edges here. I highlight them and move them and you can see that they can move into the viewport the way I have uh, pre selected. For example, I can just rotate and I can pick my edge and move it in space. In such a way, I can just change the shape. Now, as you can see, if I select something on the screen, I get something what we call a manipulator. It has a different names in different software. In SOLIDWORKS, it's called Triad. But let's explore a bit more what this is about. This is what we call manipulator. And by default, it is aligned to the world coordinate system. So you have, you see the three arrows here. And if I move my mouse, it, they highlight. This means that if I pick this arrow, I can just move in this direction. So it doesn't move freely, totally free in space, but it just moves into the direction which I want to. The other couple of controls here are what it's called the, the scaling options. These are the balls here, which you can see. So if I just hover, hold my left mouse button, I can just move and as you can see it's scaled based on the center of my selection. The other options you can see are these um, the arcs that are for the rotation. For example, if I use this, it will just rotate my selection around the y-axis in this case. So you can navigate, align and accurately just move this in space. Furthermore, there are some quotes here and they allow in this example that I just move my selection only on the XY plane. You can freely move, but if you want to lock only in one direction, you can just pick the arrows. As you can see in 3D, they automatically hide themselves so you cannot pick them because it's difficult to use them. So this is the our, our auto hiding option. So you don't always see a lot of controls on the screen. For example, if I want to move in this plane, I just rotate the view in a suitable way so I can move this in space. And the last thing that we want to add for our tutorial, I will just place this into the front view, is that when I select, Sometimes you will find out that if you want to move, you want to be really precise. For this reason, we have here a control which is called a drag strength. What it does by default, it's uh, up to 100%. It starts from 0 to 100%. And it actually changes your sensibility of your mouse. So if I move this now, you see that the arrow is exactly where my cursor is, but if I just scroll this down, you actually reduce the effect of the mouse. So if I move the mouse, it just moves really slowly. So in the future, when you try to do a really precise adjustment, you can just set this to a really low value, and then you can just tweak until you get a good result. Please be aware that this is actually a zero value here. So if you put it to zero, it actually doesn't move. So make sure you never put this to the very end of your um, slide. You can now do some practicing yourself and you can create these two, two um, patches here. You can move them around. You can play with the drag strength and learn how to change this in space. Thank you for watching.